But at any rate, I want to share something else that's really on my heart this morning while we were sitting there praising God. In uh, Colossians, it says, For this reason uh, we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you, and ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. This is Colossians 1, 9. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might. Lord, show me your muscles. No, I'm just... <laughs> Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power uh, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. You've heard me say that a lot of times. Uh, I'm just going to share this quick little blip here before we get started with the Mama Day sermon today. But uh, if you love the Lord, live for him. Amen. If you love God, live for him. And I know a lot of, there's a lot of uh, people that are Christians, and it's not that they're not saved, but they, they allow themselves to have all kinds of behavior that's contrary to what the Word of God says, and they'll say, well, you know, we live by grace and nobody's perfect. Shut up. In the spirit realm, God has made you perfect because he cleansed you of all your sin. But the reality of it is as we're walking on this earth, we ought to be walking in holiness. It ought to matter to you how you live. Amen? And there's some people say, well, you know, and, and everybody's caught up with this. This is not to condemn you. I'm just telling you. There's people that, that will put up, like, for instance, a guy, and, and I'm going to just cover the gamut here. A guy has a, a, a sexual thought that he shouldn't have about somebody who's not his spouse and then he goes, well, you know, everybody has thoughts. Shut up, man. I mean, control your mind. Control where your mind is. Amen? And, uh, uh, or, or maybe you say, you know, well, uh, one day I preached on being a glutton. Let's not be gluttons. Let's take care of the temple of the Holy Spirit that we live in here. Yeah. Amen? And so I said, you know, you go to the buffet and eat five plates, and you know it's not good on your body. And after I got done, this guy came up joking with me. I said, hey, what are you doing this afternoon? Well, I'm going to go to the buffet, and I'm going to eat five plates. And I said, I know you think that's funny. The reality is God's never mad at you. What am I supposed to, since I know that God isn't mad at me, does that mean I should live any way I want to live? I'm going to live for him. He died for me. I think I live for him. Amen? And we got people that will say, well, you know, I may, I may have a little, have somebody sleep over and have somebody of the opposite sex sleep over a night, that doesn't mean I don't love God. It does mean you're not obedient to God. Am I meddling? Come on. The truth about it is, is I love God. I want to live for him. I want to do the things he wants me to do. Amen? And I don't want to make excuses for myself. And when we take this attitude, nobody's perfect, so I'll do what I want to do. No, no. God has proclaimed us righteous because of the blood of Christ. I want to live for him. And do I screw up? Yeah, am I a human being? Yes. But immediately, I don't feel good about it. Amen? Why is that? Well, I know uh, the Bible said that he's written his laws and commands in our minds and hearts. And yet the very next line says, but my sins and iniquities he'll remember no more. That comes in Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Now, let me, uh, because he's not remembering my sins, does that mean that I should live any way I want? You want me to shut up yet? Let me tell you something. I want to live for God. I'm not going to be a drunk. I'm not going to be an addict. I remember what John Osteen said. He said, I don't drink or chew, and I don't hang with women that do. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, the point is, is that, man, let's live for God. I love, how many people love God? And, man, when, 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 uh, when he speaks to your heart to act a certain way, just do it. Don't argue with him. He knows more about what's good for you than you do. I think he's already proved that, ain't he? Let's make our confession. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I will do what it says I can do. 
Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert and my heart is receptive. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the Word of God. And I'll never be the same. Never, never, never. Never be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. I think mothers are special. Even the temptation said, said, my papa was a rolling stone. Wherever lead I did. It didn't say mom was a rolling stone. It was papa. You know, moms, I, I don't know how to say this. I'm not saying moms are, you know, but they do. Uh, uh, they seem to act better than dads do sometimes. How many people believe that? You'll have a good showing on mama's day, but on dad's day, they're fishing. You don't sin against fishing. I mean, you know, uh, God is out there next to that pond or river. But this is also true. It, there's got to be a Bible verse in here that says if you catch catfish and you cut them into fillets and fry them, then the only way it's not a sin if you do it on Sunday if you invite the pastor over there to have some. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I'm just messing with you. We need to get serious now. <laughs> Merle Haggard even said that, his, uh, that it was his mama that... Remember that? I turned 21 in prison doing life without patrol. What happens there? Oh, mama tried? Yeah, and mamas really do try. You know, uh, the Bible says if you raise kids in, in, in the way they should be raised, when they get older, they won't, they won't turn away from it. Uh, did you know that my mother raised me in the way that I should be raised, and yet I went wild in a march hair? But I returned, didn't I? You know why? Boy, you're planting that seed in people, and that seed, you put it in that ground, and God's going to water it, and, and he's going to bring increase. And I want to tell you something. If you look at your kids now and say, I raised them right, they're not acting right. Oh, so what? You didn't either. <laughs> but they'll come around. Everyone say, my kids will come around. In spite of me. <laughs> a drill sergeant was frustrated in his efforts to make a soldier out of a certain recruit. The trainee lagged behind on marches, used any excuse to go on a sick call, grumbled constantly about the food, and never made his cot up right. One day, a noticeable change took place in the young man. When asked what he did uh, to make him act right, he said, well, threats and punishment didn't work, so I had to resort to the ultimate weapon. I called his mom. <laughs> man, I'll tell you what now. Uh, it makes a difference. Psalm 127.1 said, Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. The reality of it is, we need to have godly homes. And moms, I want to thank you for your part and you play in these godly homes. Amen? Uh, don't look at your parents and say, well, it, it, how many people know it seems like a real thing today? If you're not acting right, well, you should have been the way, seen the way I was raised. Well, so what? You're an adult now. You make decisions for the way you're acting today. Amen? But when the Lord builds a house, if you're not, if you're not going to even try to build it with the Lord, you're laboring in vain. The old blues singer used to say this. He said, takes God to build a home. 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 Do you believe that? Second... Timothy 1.3, I thank God whom I serve for, from my forefathers with per, pure conscience that without ceasing I have remembrance of thee in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see thee, being mindful of thy tears, that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded in thee also. 
Moms, you may not think you have an effect, but you have an effect on these kids. Amen? I remember when uh, Debbie got sick and, and Angela said, uh, 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 but you are my rock. And she is. She's been a good mother, been a good wife. You know she's a good wife. She's put up with me for over 41 years. She should get an award or somehow. It was Lord uh, Shaftesbury who said, Give me a generation of Christian mothers and I'll undertake to change the whole face of society in 12 months. In Philippians 2.20, the Apostle Paul makes the following statement about Timothy. He says, There is no one like Timothy. And again in Acts 16.2, he says, The brothers of Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him. Talking about Timothy. What was it that caused Paul and Luke to make such a commendable statement regarding this son of faith? The answer is found that he was raised by his grandma and his mother to love God, to believe God. So you may think that you're not having an effect on your child, but ladies, you are. Chuck Swindoll says this, if you were blessed with a good mother, you will reap the benefits the rest of your days. If your mother neglected your needs and failed to support your dad, unfortunately, much of what you suffered cannot be erased. For good or ill, a mother's mark is permanent. I had a good mom and didn't have a good dad, but man, I had a good mom. And I did hate her dragging me to church, but today I'm thankful for it. Amen. Great men and women of the faith. Someone said mothers write on the hearts of their children what the rough hand of the world cannot erase. John Quincy Adams said, all that I am, my mother made me. Abraham Lincoln said, all that I am or hope to be, I, I owe to my angel mother. Dwight Moody said, all that I've ever accomplished in my life, I owe to my mother. I, myself, Bob Katz, I have my mother's personality. And we looked at things the same and, and uh, we had the same compassion for people. And, and uh, she hasn't been gone long, so I really miss her. But uh, I don't know that that, that, will that ever change? No. From childhood, Timothy had known the sacred writings which are able to give him the wisdom that leads to salvation through faith. Proverbs 6, 20 said, My son, keep your father's commands and do not forsake your mother's teaching. We had a, we, we had a, uh, uh, we, used to, we used to put up a fireworks tent. We had the fireworks tent up one time and, and there was a mom that came in there and, and uh, her little boy reached up and slapped her in the face and she didn't know anything about it. I said, you better stop that right now. She goes, uh. Well, he doesn't mean anything by it. I said, you stop him from slapping you now because he's dishonoring you. Or when he gets older, he'll try to do the same thing. Well, how do I stop him? How about wail that butt? Hebrews eleven twenty three 23, by faith Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Hebrews eleven thirty says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she received the spies with peace. Did you know who Rahab was? One of the relatives of Jesus. I remember when Jesus, you know, was walking, somebody said, how can anything good come out of Nazareth? When I first got saved, there were people that knew my parents and said, how can anything good come out of Bob? The only way anything good comes out of anybody is because everything good and wonderful gift comes down from the Father of light. Any goodness or anything in us is attributed because God worked through other people to help teach us and bring us along. Amen? I had a preacher tell me, a young preacher tell me, I don't listen to anybody but God. Well, if you're listening to him, that's all right. But God has placed people in your life to help bring you along. Don't ignore their teaching. 
They're trying to help you. Amen? You ever heard somebody, heard your mom tell you something you wish she had not told you? Well, yeah. Except for Chloe, because I know her mom told her everything good all the time. No. Rahab was included in all these faith heroes in Hebrews 11. Uh, Rahab could have continued traveling on that low hell-bound road of degradation and defilement and depravity, but she didn't. Somebody said, do you think Rahab got saved? How did he get saved? You get saved by faith, don't you? And that's what she had. She had faith, and her faith turned into works when she hid the spies that were brought into there. I want to tell you something. By faith, it says the harlot Rahab perished not. Perished not with the ones that perished. Why? Well, because she had faith. It says in Matthew 1, 5, And Salmon, Salmon begat Boaz of Rachab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. And unquestionably, Rachab is the same person as Rahab the harlot. What, no reference to her harlotry here? Why is that? You know why? When a person moves into faith, they're not considered what they once were. Can I tell you this? I was a drunk and an addict, but in the eyes of God, I'll never be that. Now I'm a child of God. As a matter of fact, when you read, when you read in, in 1 Corinthians, uh, the sixth chapter from 9 through down, it, it talks about all the list of people that will not inherit the kingdom of God. And then it tells you this. He goes this in the 11th verse, I think it is. And such were some of you. But you have been washed and cleansed by the blood of Christ. I want you to say this. What I once was, I'll never be. I've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Amen. When a sinner becomes identified with Christ, the shame and the stigma of sin is washed away. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you, moms, you're turning out absolutely wonderful children because you led them to church. You taught them the Word of God. You told them that there's something greater than what we see right here. People try to get me upset all the time. By, I'm telling you, I don't know if they're trying to get me upset or what, but they want me to get involved in all their worry and fretting. I really do, man. Are you seeing what's happening in this world? Yeah. We're going to hell in a handbasket. But you and I aren't. We received Jesus. Don't you see what's happening in this world? What do you want me to do? I told you this, I think, last Sunday. The most weirdest thing I ever answered that with was, what are we going to do, Pastor? This guy was after. What are we going to do, Pastor? i tell you what I'm going to do about this world and what's happening. He said, what? After church today, I'm going to get on my Harley and ride up to the barbecue and have a sandwich. What's that got to do with it? I'm not worried about any of it. No matter what happens to this world, my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. My mother planted things in me that even though I ran away from them, man, they got me anyway. Amen? We have a a job to do here on earth. We need to lead other people to this wonderful Jesus. My mom planted things in me. I believed in the miraculous because I saw the miraculous happening around me. Amen? I saw, I, I believed in faithfulness and due to this day, why? Because my mother was faithful. I live a life as much as I can to walk in holiness because I saw that in my mother. With all the trash going on, I remember one time somebody said, well, your mom is so sweet all the time. She wasn't sweet. She put all us in the car and she went up to the bar and dragged dad out of it. 
She wasn't acting very sweet that day. She drugged Dad out of that bar. I'm going to tell you something. She made a stand for righteousness. I never saw her drink. I never saw her smoke a cigarette. I never saw her do it. Why? Because her relationship with God was important to her, and she wanted to not only just be saved, she wanted to look saved. I learned that from my mama. I learned that you don't have to have everything to be happy. I remember moving into a storefront on Skid Row in San Diego. It wasn't an apartment. It was a closed down old building, but they rented us out there and they had one bathroom in the back that everybody that was in that building, there were some people living upstairs too, could go into that uh, that place and take a shower and use the bathroom. That was a gross experience for me. <laughs> Horrible. But did you know what? My mom had a smile on her face all the time. When I was 16, I was supporting our whole family working at, at uh, T.O. Bateman Chemical Company. I made $2 an hour. That was 40 cents more than the minimum wage. And I'd work 40 hours and make 80 bucks and take home $65, and we lived off of that. Did you know, even though we weren't living on very much money at all, my mother never frowned. She never sat down without blessing that food that we were getting to partake of. And I'm thinking, man, this ain't very much to be blessing God about, you know. And she loved God. She loved it if we had a little bit. She loved it if we had a lot. Of course, we never had a lot, but I knew she would if we had had a lot. Moms, you have changed the lives of your children by making the stand that you make. Now, I want to tell you, don't waver in that stand. I had a gal inside the church years ago, and I got in trouble because periodically I get in trouble with Debbie. But she'd been living a horrible lifestyle, and I was brand new at pastoring, and there was a lot of things I didn't handle right. And she was sitting in front of me, and, and she had three little kids. And she goes, well, at least I'm raising my kids right. I'm bringing them to church. I said, it's a good thing you're bringing to church. And she said, they'll always be good. No, they're going to be drunks and addicts and whores like you. And Debbie's sitting out there, and she's going, no. <laughs> what I did was I said the truth, but I could have said it better than that. <laughs> Let me tell you something, folks. Kids don't do what we tell them to do. They do what we do. Now, I've, I've made mistakes in my life, but my kids have seen me make a stand for Jesus and stick with it. Amen? And they're living for the Lord this day. They had a mom. Debbie was such a wonderful mother. I didn't agree with everything she did. I was raised where whatever mom fixed, that's what you ate. But Melissa wouldn't eat a pea if they'd give her a million dollars for it. <laughs> so she wasn't made to eat her peas. The one time I thought she had done it, Debbie was working at a little grocery store, and so they hated it when she had to work at night because then I would cook, and I'm a horrible cook. <laughs> so I, first of all, had taken everything I could find in the refrigerator and stuck it in some hamburger and called it meatloaf. <laughs> then I made some peas with it and I looked over at Melissa's plate and all the peas were gone. I said, honey, you are doing so good eating those peas. She was a little bitty girl and as I was walking back in the kitchen, I saw something in the corner of my eye. She was going over to the hamper and spitting them into the hamper. <laughs> but Debbie always wanted to make something that they'd enjoy. She was really a good mom. If I'd have raised them, they'd have been really in trouble. 
but but she's such a good mom. And I want to tell you something. Uh, We all know this. When we had good mothers, we'll never forget that. The things that you planted inside of your kids, oh, my gosh. It's wonderful. You are world changers is what you are. You may not think of it that way, but you really are. Amen? And I've had people over the years that will go like this, and they'll say, well, Pastor, uh, I don't know about Mother's Day because I didn't have a good mother. Are you a mother? Yes. Then you be a good mother. But we need to celebrate our mothers on this day, and we need to do it all year long. My kids, am I lifting up my family? I don't want you to think they're perfect, but they're as close to perfect as any human being could possibly be. (laughs) But they have honored their mother and they've honored their father, and, and, and we appreciate that. That's important in this day and age. Amen? And we do everything we can for them. My mom placed in me this desire. Not when I first started hearing it, I thought it was a bull. Do you remember being drugged to church by your mother? Do you remember there were times you just couldn't stand it? I remember the time she got a little agitated at me because we went inside that little Baptist church, and I loved music, but here was the choir Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. I said, Mom, what are they sad about? Well, honey, they're not sad. They're praising God. I'm going, oh, my Lord no wonder I like Motel and Rock, Motown and Rock better than this, you know. And then when I first got saved, I thought my mother would really like all the modern praise music that I was enjoying. When I first got saved, I didn't enjoy praise music at all. I thought it was very, very boring. Then as I grew in the Lord and fell so much in love with the Lord, then praise music just became a, a part of my life, you know. But my mother liked the old hymns. Anybody like the old hymns? Boy, they, they were so informational, weren't they? They were the Word of God. And yet she used everything as I was growing up to be a lesson. Well, Mom, they don't look like they're happy. Did you listen to the words? Yeah. Do you believe we ought to praise God? Yes. Do you believe that that all blessings flow from God? Yes. So that's what the song is about. Well, let's get with it and get a little excited about it. Amen. Let me tell you this, folks. We're going to wind this up. We're going we're gonna to give some flowers and plants away to... to to you ladies today we love you and it's not much but it's just something the church wants to give you to let you know how much we love you and appreciate you uh, uh, I'm going to close in prayer and again we're going to have communion here in a little bit but first of all I want to know uh, who has the most kids in here how many have five kids how many people have eight kids Anybody? How many people have 10 kids? 11? Anybody more than 11? Well, I think you got it. Oh, oh, somebody else? How many you have? You have 16 kids? I'm not talking about in your daycare. Oh, besides that? Oh, may God bless you. 
Why don't you come up here and get one of these plants? I thought you were going to be the greatest. You've got, you should be wore out. Hey, just grab one of these plants up here. Yeah. Now, we got it with that hook so you could wear it as a necklace. No, I'm just teasing. And what's the other one? Oldest. Who's the oldest mom in here? You don't want to admit it, but we can see you're old. <laughs> Who is 80? Got any 80-year-old moms in here? Any 75-year-old moms? 79. Anybody older than that? 79? All right, so come forward and get this other plant. We love you lots. We love all our moms. When we dismiss here in a little bit, what we're going to do is uh, uh, each one of you can come up and get some flower, get a flower up here. I don't know what all they are, but we don't want to keep any of them here, do we? Aren't we supposed to give them all away, Tiona? Yes, supposed to give them all away, so make sure there's no one. I don't want one. We don't want plants even at our house because plants are where, we're the place where plants go to die. So at any rate, I want us to stand to our feet. First of all, let's give all of our mothers a round of applause. We thank you. We love you. If your mom's, if you're standing by your mom, give your mom a hug, would you? Did he crush you when he gave you that hug? The big guy, I asked him if he wanted to be a bodyguard. Uh, from the bottom of my heart, I want to tell you this. I may be 69 years old, but I've had women that have treated me like they're, I'm their kid here. And uh, I want to tell you, if you had no natural children, God's placed it in you to be able to help other people. Amen? And we appreciate you anyway. You're, you're just something. You're special. I want us to make a confession here real quick. Let's just raise our hands. Say, Heavenly Father, I know you sent Jesus to die on the cross and pay for all my sin. Your word says that if I believe that and confess Jesus as Lord, I'm saved. I do that right now. Jesus is my Lord. He died for me. I will live for him. In Jesus' name. Now give him a clap offering. We love you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, we got people to take communion? To help us with communion? This is not wine. It's grape juice. It's not Jack Daniels. It's grape juice. Thank you. What? For what? Oh, okay, I'll tell them. Need everybody to come in there and get, okay. Huh? Okay.
Uh, there will be a short, go ahead. Yeah, going to be a quick patch holder meeting after the service today. And also, Stephen wants you to know that there's uh, f food back there, donations, you know, of different kinds of food or whatever it is. And uh, so you can go back there and pick it up. Are you kind of limping around there? to be part of the church to take communion. Please partake communion with us. For thee, O oh, the follies of sin, I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou Oh, if ever I love thee My Jesus, tis now Hallelujah All righty. You know, somebody said, I don't think, I don't know if taking communion is that important, but Jesus said, unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you can have no life in you. Peter heard that and he goes, you know, the disciples, other disciples started leaving. Jesus goes, will you leave, Peter? He goes, where would I go? You have the words of life. Amen. Let's raise this bread up. Thank you, Jesus, for your broken body. It is for my healing, my spouse's healing, my children's healing. Thank you that by your stripes, by the beatings you bore, by the lashes which fell on your back, we are completely healed. I believe and I receive. Let's raise the cup. Thank you, Jesus, for the new covenant cut in your blood. Your blood has brought me forgiveness. Wash me from every sin. I thank you that your blood has made me righteous. And as I drink, I celebrate and partake of the inheritance of the righteous, which is preservation, healing, wholeness, and prosperity. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Did you receive healing? I got to be honest with you. I don't know why God puts up with me. He must really love me. I got done drinking this down. I wanted to sing chug lug, chug lug, but that would be totally inappropriate.
We have a six-day-old baby in here. Is that the baby I held? Absolutely gorgeous. I'm jealous because that baby has hair. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, the Bible says in James, it said, we, we, with this tongue, we bless God, but oftentimes we curse man who was made in God's image. My brethren, it ought not be so. Amen? So we just want to leave you with a blessing. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, I proclaim a blessing on everyone here. Business, home, social, physical, mental, and spiritual. Pour out your love, your power, your grace, your spirit in such a mighty way that when the rest of the world sees them, They'll say, surely these people have been with Jesus. Amen.